Hello and welcome to this week's review and it's a review of a phono amplifier by Musical Fidelity. It's called the M6X and this is part one of a sort of two-part review. I say sort of because the majority of the features offered by the M6X will be covered in this review and most people will not need to go beyond this. Actually though, before we go any further, I think I can explain more within the closer look. Welcome to the Closer Look section for the Musical Fidelity M6X Phono Amplifier. Now this Phono Amplifier offers inputs and outputs for the single-ended connections, which is why we're looking at the rear of the chassis to begin with. And that will cover the needs for most hi-fi users out there. Now the M6X also handles balanced outputs for those with balanced amplifiers, and I'll talk about those a bit later in this review. More than that though, this unit also offers balanced inputs. Why do you need those? Well, for those users who might have a turntable with balanced terminations. There are fewer examples of that particular turntable breed available in the market. Now, I have many turntables in my collection, but a design with balanced terminations? Well, no, not in my possession, you might say. However, I would like to see and review one and I am in talks with Project to do just that. If and when that time arises, well, I will hook it up to this very Ferna amplifier, the M6X, and I will test it in balanced mode on this box. And that will be part two within the review for that particular turntable, whatever the turntable ends up being. So keep a look out for that sometime in the future. Now while we're talking about inputs and outputs and all that malarkey, on the rear of the chassis here let's finish our tour. There are grounding posts for each input pairing, three in all. And yes that means you can in theory hook up three ten tables or at least tone arms or a combination of both I suppose and switch between them. You could, say, have a default stereo source, and I don't know, you could maybe hook up another to play 78 discs, perhaps, with a specialist 78 cartridge. And what about mono play with a mono cartridge? You could do that as well. Swinging to the far left, you will notice a ground lift switch. So, if you have hum issues and I didn't experience anything like that during this review, but in your system, if you do, well, there's a few options there to tackle it. And right on the far right is another socket, this time for the IEC power cable. Switching to the busy front fascia now, and a quick general point. Now look, I get the aesthetic direction. So that comedy expanse versus the devastating irony of tiny buttons and tiny lights and tiny labeling. But in usability terms, well, I reckon the interface is pretty substandard. The guy who wrote the manual, for example, well, because he kept the illustrations in scale, you can hardly see what his captions refer to. They're so small. That just gives you an idea when you're using this particular amplifier. The captions and the manual, well, I have to take it on trust. Oh, and when you press a button, it glows blue. Well, something glows blue. Using my newly bought magnifying glass then, at the far left we have a power button with power, standby and mute lights above. To the right of that is a toggle button to flick between moving magnet and moving coil play. Next in line is a selection of moving magnet loads. So that means 47 kilo ohms and 50 to 400 PF. Next in line is a subsonic filter. Then you get a plus six 
decibel gain if your hi-fi needs a bit of a boost and more loading options but this time for moving coil and this time we have a bit of a range 25 to 1.2 kilo ohms and 470 pfs finally you will see a source button which cycles through the same based on discrete circuitry and as a valve phono amplifier fan i approve of that the m6x spans 440 millimeters by 100 by 385 millimeters and weighs in at a comparatively light for the size of this box five and a half kilograms you can buy it in silver or black so how does this thing sound then well let's go to the sound quality tests and we will find out Welcome to the sound quality tests for the Musical Fidelity M6X Phono Amplifier. And I recently used Mike Ophiel's incantations on vinyl to help review a pair of PMC 2526i floor standing speakers. That was just, what, last week, wasn't it? Time flies, guys, time flies. And as that was still out and about, and because I'm a lazy so-and-so, I plonked it back on my Origin Live Sovereign turntable with a high-end moving coil. Oh, and incidentally, that PMC review, link above. Anyway, back to the moving coil. This is a prototype, so no names, no patrol here. However, it's high-end and it has a sapphire cantilever. First impression then of the M6X, well, I was very happy with the focus and precision around the upper mids because of that precision with notes starting and stopping rather briskly and then racing off to the next one music never dragged it never felt slothful and there's a word you don't often hear in hi-fi reviews but you're gonna get it in this one because hey we're cultured hey so in other words there was always a sense of pace from the m6x Another reason for that was the rather solid state presentation, one that accentuated the upper mid frequencies in a slight digital fashion, giving a slight edge at times, especially during crescendos. The glockenspiel section of this record was a good example of that. Hence, the overall presentation in single-ended mode was not strictly neutral or balanced, I would say. Now this edge, well, it wasn't too accentuated and often became a virtual boon during parts of the arrangement of this record. For example, later in this album, Oldfield offers us a sort of, well, decidedly staccato, choppy electric guitar series of strums and the sheer texture from this sequence was impressive indeed. The presentation of the sound also lifted subtle, or shy elements of the mix, bringing them up to the surface for the ear to track. So much for moving coil. I then tried moving magnet, and I brought in a Riga Planner 3, and I played the Mental Wealth compilation album from the vinyl subscription club, Vinyl Moon. And I did a, um, did I? Yes, I did a news item in a past, call. Oh, when was it? It was a few weeks ago now. Hi-Fi News, etc. I'll put a link above. You can check out Vinyl Moon for yourself. Anyway, this music was rather relaxed, rather low BPM, kind of the sun's going down on a golden beach type of Balearic sounds. The moving magnet module on the M6X, well, it sounded wholly more balanced and far more neutral. Although the less incisive nature of this lower cost moving magnet cartridge I'm sure they had a part to play in that. Even so, the warming bass combined beautifully with the rich mid-range synth noises and treble-based filigree effects. The rolling heartbeat bass lulled the ears into a relaxed state. Even the higher paced fur later in the album, that was highly engaging with an almost organic tone to the bass. What I mean by that is that bass had this real 
give during each strike. There was no hint of chrome beats here. Next, well, I went back to Mike Oldfield and back to the moving coil cartridge, but this time I switched to a balanced output. And oh yes, this was the one. This was the one, folks. Everything clicked into place here. Gone was that slight edge around the mids. In came delicacy around the upper mids. Treble, well, that was now full of fragility and a whole new sense of frequency balance. Neutrality was wholly restored now via this balanced mode, which kind of sounds obvious, but it isn't always so. The tonal realism from the M6X, well, that lifted up a couple of rungs in the sonic ladder, while subtleties like nuanced reverb now inserted itself into the music without any effort. Here, the glockenspiel sounded like perfectly formed sonic raindrops, while the later guitar and drum section, they provided both strength, mass, but also power in reserve. So then, how do I conclude this review? Well, let me give you a few final thoughts. I'll do some pros and cons, and then I'll give you a rating. While I might be rather grumpy when considering the interface for this box, I did love the expansive nature of the feature set and the overall sound of the Musical Fidelity M6X. In single-ended mode, Moving Magnet offered an excellent performance, while Moving Coil was fine. It was fine. It was good without being great. Perfectly usable, though, especially for those who like a solid state sound. For me, though, if you go moving coil via the M6X, make sure that you hook up a balanced output to your amplifier. In this mode, the M6X sounded absolutely sublime, a sheer audio delight, and well worth the price tag. Pros and cons. And in the good section, we have that balanced output. It transformed the M6X, and that was my favourite output of the two. Moving Magnus Performance, very neutral in single-ended mode, very balanced, I loved it. Build quality, this is a solid box, it's not the heaviest box you're ever going to pick up, and that's fine, no problem with that, but the build quality is good. Feature set, well as I say, this is an expansive suite of features. You can hook up multiple turntables, you've got multiple outputs and inputs. In the bad section, well, slightly edgy mids in single-ended mode, single-ended output mode, and then there's that comic interface. The interface itself is well-built, good parts quality, you can tell, but it's a bit small for my liking. However, I will still be giving this box, the M6X Phono Amplifier for Musical Fidelity, an award-winning rating. I'll be giving this one 8 out of 10 and a groovy congratulations to Musical Fidelity. And that's your lot, folks. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. And down there, before you go, if you could do me a favour and click on the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already done so. Anyway, down below in the description, you will find contact points for Musical Fidelity contact points for my Facebook group, which you're welcome to join, and my website, and also my Patreon page, which has all kinds of exclusives over there and helps to support this channel. It funds this channel. So, very important. Anyway, I will see you for Hi-Fi News, etc. And all kinds of goodies as per usual. I'd love to have your company. Until then, folks, bye-bye for now.